Hello, hello everyone and welcome to my weekly Facebook Live. Um, today we're going to be talking about the top three mistakes you're making while using coconut flour and how to fix them. So I'm Libby, I'm the founder of DitchTheCarbs.com, I'm a pharmacist, a health coach and mother of three and I'm going to discuss all today all about how to fix your problems with coconut flour and let me know in the comments where you're watching from and which do you prefer, coconut flour or almond flour. So let's get cracking. So welcome, welcome to my Facebook Live every week. Um, every week I always do a little topic, top three mistakes you're making, how to fix them. Last week it was low carb sweeteners. The week before that it was about how to start low carb and any problems you're having or the top three mistakes you're making. So let me know in the comments below today, where are you watching from and which do you prefer? Do you prefer coconut flour or almond flour? But today in particular we're going to be going through the top three mistakes you're making when using coconut flour and how to fix them. So the number one mistake I see every single day, every single day, is that people do not use coconut flour in recipes that have already been developed using coconut flour. Now the reason I say that is because coconut flour and almond flour are completely, and wheat flour, completely, completely different. They have completely different properties. You use different quantities. You need different amount of eggs, different amount of um, dry to liquid ratio, it's completely, completely different. So the number one mistake is if you're brand new to using coconut flour, only start out using recipes that have been developed using coconut flour. So like I say, it like takes a lot of recipe development to figure out how to either manipulate a recipe to use coconut flour and you need to use far less coconut flour, far more eggs because the eggs give you protein, it gives you structure. It replaces what, say, gluten would have done in a wheat flour recipe. You need that structure and the protein to help bind everything. So it's not an easy fix to just swap, and you can't swap them like for like. And the reason I say this is the number one mistake that people make is because I would say on a daily basis, sometimes two or three times a day, I will get comments on the Facebook page or on the website saying, I made this but I didn't have almond flour, I used coconut flour, or I didn't have coconut flour, I used almond flour, and it didn't work, it was a flop, and it's like, well that's not my recipe, <laughs> Don't, you can't easily swap them in between, so that's the absolute number one mistake, and I would say the easiest coconut flour recipes if you want to go and try some today is probably my keto waffles, that's the number one um, pancake kind of breakfast recipe on the site um, there's also my oh I know my raspberry vanilla mug cakes they are so easy and so quick and they literally take a minute you know who hasn't got a minute um, so that's really really easy to make so if you've got a sweet craving hitting you go and make a one minute mug cake so that's number one I'll just hop on and see what else people are, are liking here remember tell me where you're watching from and tell me which is your favorite coconut flour or almond flour because I like to make recipes for both. Oh, and here we go. Dallas, you're, you like almond flour. Yep, fair enough. I like going flour too. Prefer almond flour. Kerry from Queensland, you like both. Joan from Lancashire, you like almond flour. Yep, it's, it's easier to use, I must admit, and I'll give you some reasons why I, I use both. From Massachusetts, I use almond flour, but I like coconut flour. And you're, Yeah, the vanilla berry mug cake is one of the most popular recipes there. And hi from England. So it's lovely to see you all. So like I say, tell me where you're watching and which flour do you do. So number one is not using recipes that were developed to use a coconut flour. You must, must, must use them. If I get my little wagging finger out, only use those recipes. Once you've been low carb for a while, absolutely, you know the properties of, low, of coconut flour and how it works. You can start to play around with swapping them in and out, but it's really, really not for beginners. If you've never used it before, it's very tricky to use. Um, so number two is not flavoring your coconut flour recipes enough. Now I say this because coconut flour recipes require more eggs than say an almond flour recipe. Some people say they can either taste the sort of mild um, flavor of the coconut flour coming through or they can taste the mild flavor of the eggs coming through. So if it's a sweet recipe, use extra sweetener, use extra vanilla, use um, extra whatever flavoring you're putting in there, cinnamon or ginger, use extra and always taste before baking. And so, I mean, that would be the same with any regular, you know, before if you're using wheat flour and sugar, you would always taste the baking before popping it in the oven or the microwave, whichever you're doing. So always taste beforehand. If you're making a savory recipe, say for example, my um, cheese mini flour loaves, mini cheese 
coconut flour loaves. Um, I would add extra cheese. I would add extra chili, maybe some extra rosemary, a little bit of extra salt and pepper. So flavor them well. And if they don't taste great before you're baking, nothing's going to change. They're still going to taste a little bit off once you've baked them. So always make sure you over flavor or you over sweeten or you add additional cheese or additional vanilla, depending on whether you're making a sweet or savory recipe. So that is era number two. Let's see who else is coming in. Um, oh, almond flour. From, yep, so tell me where you're watching from and which flour you prefer. Um, from Miserable Melbourne. Oh, bless you, darling. Yeah, we can see in the news that you're in the second lockdown. Um, um, hi, from Corpus Christ, Texas. I like both, depending on the recipe. Yep, absolutely. Uh, from Kansas, I love coconut flour and need more recipes. Okay, go on to the ditchthecarbs.com website. Look at the top. There'll be recipe index. When you go in the recipe, all of the categories below, and I've got a specific category just for coconut flour recipes. And that will have recipes that are either developed just using coconut flour or that I've done substitutions. So if, say, for example, my famous, um, the fathead pizza recipe. You can use that using almond flour, which is the more preferred method. But if you've got an almond flour allergy or you want to use coconut flour, I do have the substitutions. They're all in there. Um, Ohio both, but starting to use more coconut flour and almond flour seems to go joint pads and swelling. Well, I know exactly why that is, um, Julie, is because the omega-3-6 ratio for almonds is far, far higher in the inflammatory um, omegas than the anti-inflammatories. That's why I use coconut flour. I absolutely love coconut flour. And I also use it because so many people have almond allergies. Like you say, it gives them inflammation in their joints. A lot of people can't take almond flour recipes to nut-free schools for their children. So that's why I develop a lot of coconut flour recipes. But like I said, it is trickier to work with. I'll be absolutely honest. And that's why I'm going through the top three mistakes. So number one is not using recipes that have been used to de developed using the coconut flour. Number two is not flavoring enough. So whether that's with sweetener, whether that's with additional cheese and chili or herbs. And number three is not understanding how coconut flour works. Now, I've got some bags here for you. This just shows you how little coconut flour. See, it's just very, very fine, and you can use any brand you want. I see that you can see, like you know before, I'm not sponsored by any brand, and I've got another one here. Find a brand that you like and stick with it, because one brand will vary from another brand, and also one batch of coconut flour bag will vary to another batch, also, depending on how long you've had the coconut flour, I always buy them. See, they come in the Ziploc bags. Always buy them with Ziploc bags because they're very, very sensitive to moisture. And that's how coconut flour works. Coconut flour is sort of like the leftover of the coconut. It's been defatted, dehydrated. It's almost just the fiber that's left over from when they make coconut cream, coconut milk, coconut oil. It's, it, you know, we utilize the entire coconut when we use coconuts. And so that's what coconut flour is. And to understand how it works, when you use coconut flour, it swells and absorbs many, many times its weight in liquid, in eggs. You need, like I said before, you need the eggs and the protein to give it structure. So not understanding how it works. Some people make, say, coconut flour pancakes, and they won't let it sit for a while to thicken. And they'll go, oh, the, the pancake didn't have any structure, or they were too runny. And just sit there for a while. And as you're mixing it, you can see it swelling and absorbing. And as you add the eggs as well, it seems to thicken with the eggs as you're adding that to the mixture. So understand how coconut flour works. And one thing I do want to show you, some people get confused about whether they're actually using coconut flour in the first place. Some people, see this is desiccated coconut. That's what I would use in my granola recipe. That's not coconut flour. Some people use that and they use it, say, in their coffee grinder to make a flour, you know, the flour um, texture, but it's not coconut flour because desiccated coconut still has the fat, still has some moisture. Coconut flour doesn't. So I've got whole posts on the website about the ultimate guide to low carb flours. I've also got another guide on low carb flour versus almond flour, and I talk about fiber. I talk about net um, carbs because coconut flour is so much lower in net carbs than almond flour. Um, about your omega-3-6 ratio, coconut flour has a far more favorable ratio than almond flour. Um, in cost, it's much cheaper because a cake which might, say for example, take a cup of almond flour, which is about 90 almonds, only requires, say, a quarter of a cup 
of coconut flour, but you have to use lots more eggs. So it's far, far lower in carbs and much, much higher in protein. So it's brilliant. I absolutely love it. So what the other thing I'm doing today is I always give you away something. The link to this is above. If you want to start today and you haven't got a clue where to start, here's my five-day meal plan. It's all completely free. Just put your details above. There's a meal plan. There's recipes, what you do on prep day. There's a pantry guide. There's even a progress tracker. And that's all there for you up above. So all you have to do is put your details in above and that will get sent to you immediately because I'd love you to start. Um, so let me know, like I say, where you're watching from and what, whether you like um, coconut flour or almond flour. Thank you, Kimberly. Yep, yep, my pleasure. From San Francisco, you like using both? Brilliant. Um, do you mean that you can taste the raw flour dough? Yes, you taste, that's exactly what I do. If I'm making something, I will taste it and... It's completely up to you whether you are comfortable having raw eggs. I don't, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. I've got a whole article all about, um, I think it's in the one minute mayonnaise recipe, all about um, some people are worried about having raw eggs, some people aren't. If you've ever had mayonnaise, mayonnaise made from scratch, if you've ever tasted cookie dough or cake batter, you've had raw eggs. If you've ever had um, the, I suppose hollandaise sauce is kind of cooked. Um, but I don't worry about them. You can buy pasteurized eggs or you can pasteurize them yourself. But I always taste the batter before or cookie dough or cake batter before I cook it because I might think, oh, that actually needs a little bit more vanilla this time or it might need a little bit more sweetener or if I'm making the mini cheese loaves, I might add additional cheese or additional chili. I, just a tiny bit just to know, is that going to be a success once I bake it? Because I always try and save you guys money and I don't yet have baking failures. So um, that's about it. So they are my top three tips. Not using recipes developed using coconut flour. You cannot do one-to-one -one substitutions. Um, not flavoring or sweetening your recipes enough. And number three, not understanding how coconut flour works. So that is our little uh, three tips for you today. Top three mistakes you're making and how to fix them. And come and join us. I'd love for you to um, learn how to live low carb. I teach you how to live low carb for life. I've got over 300 budget friendly and family friendly recipes and I will see you next week and next week's live. Okay, see ya, bye.